Okay, hello everyone, Victor Momo from Excel Moments and in this video, I want to show you how to dynamically stack tables based on users' choices via checkboxes. Now, that sounds like a mouthful. What exactly are you talking about? And when you say stack tables, are you going to be using Power Query? And my answer is no, I'm going to be using Excel formulas. Your next question is why? I'm like, excuse my arrogance because I can't. <laughs> No, that's not the answer. Just because it is fun sometimes, you know, to push the envelope on Excel formulas. But let me describe to you the scenario what I have here. So in this workbook, I have a couple of tables, you know, starting from this sheet here, Africa. And the tables are named, you know, as you can see above. So I have Africa, I also have Europe, Asia, North America, and South America. So like five tables. And then here, what I want to have is a table of tables. So it's a table that has a list of tables. And based on whether a checkbox is checked or not, you know, that table is added to my stack here. This is my stack. So now you can see that Africa and South America are checked, you know, and you can see them returned. And that's the reason why I have the table name included in my stack so that you know where that data is coming from. So the first column is the table name and then the data to the right is you know data from those tables so it means if i add asia in here now you can see that asia is added and because this is a table and it's dynamic if i add another table to it that wasn't even included initially and i copy a checkbox and i paste it here you can see that i now have you know europe in my data so the big question is how is this working well that's why i'm here you know i'm going to show you but before then let me just appreciate those who have subscribed you know to my channel and who keep you know liking you know passing comments it encourages me you know to do much more and those who haven't subscribed please this is an opportunity for you to do so and you can also turn on the notification bell icon so that when i post a video you would be the first even before my other subscribers to know <laughs> so back you know to excel so this is what we have here and let me just show you the building blocks the first thing is you need to know what tables will be included in your stack that's the first thing so how do you know that it's really by looking at you know which of them is checked here okay so how do i get a list of tables you know based on whether they are checked or not it's simple i just use a filter function so i can do a filter here and say filter you know this table list based on you know whatever is checked here the good thing about checkboxes is that when they are checked you know is it true when they are not checked is a false so it means that this is already the appropriate criteria for your include argument for the future so you don't need to do something like oh is this equals to true is this no it's fine as is so all you do is just close the bracket and you can see this is the list of you know uh, tables that have been you know checked if i then check one more you can see it's dynamic so that expands so that's one part now these are the table names but what you need for your stack is the data within you know those tables okay so and you know how to do that in excel when you have a name either a range name you know a table name and you want to pull data from there and you have the name sitting in maybe an excel you know a cell you just use indirect right so if i do for example which is the forbidden function. <laughs> but I'll use it all the same. If you do indirect of this, it's going to return the data within that. It means what Excel does is that Excel looks and says, oh, you're looking for a name called Africa. What does Africa represent? So Excel looks through itself and then finds a table called Africa and it returns it. So if this was A10, for example, then it will return the data in South America. That's basically, you know, how that works. So those are the two pieces, you know, being able to get, you know, the names of the tables, then being able to get the data from those tables Then the next thing is okay when i have you know the tables and um, the data from the tables how do i stack all of them together what function do i use but fundamentally it's a v stack right that's what it is you know but the problem is if you want to write it the way most people are thinking about it, like if you have 20 tables, you say V stack table 1, comma table 2, comma table 3, all the way to table 20. That doesn't, you know, look to me very elegant. So if I have a list of tables already and, you know, I want to stack them up together and get the final stack, what I think about is reduce. 
somebody's like Victor, why reduce? Well, let me show you how, you know, kind of the reduce works. So what the reduce does is that the reduce takes a group of items, right? And a calculation that is performed on them and reduce returns, you know, the final step of the calculation, depending on what the calculation is. The calculation could be anything. But in this case, if you think about it, what our calculation really is, is what a stack. So let's look at this. Let's take this as our tables, right? And I purposely put, you know, different colors and different objects so that it's clear what's going on. So we have four tables that look like this four. Now we want to stack all of them together. The first time, so it's like you're doing a loop, right? Iterating and the calculation is just what stack what you have, you know, with the other items. So when you go the first time, you know, you see the first item. That's what you see. You pick that first item in your first iteration and this is your result. Now that result becomes the starting point for the second step. So it means that by the time I'm going into the second step, I already have this green, you know, circle that's there. And then when I go back to my list of items, I've already used this. So I'm not going to go back there. I'm now going to go to the red cross. I take the red cross and I bring it and then I stack it with, you know, the green circle. So now it means I have, you know, the green circle and the red cross. Those two together, you know, will now form you know the starting point for the third step so for the third step i'm like okay yes i need to go back to my item list when i go back to my item list i've already used the first two so what am i going to see i'm going to see the third one right which looks like uh, some abacus you know and it picks that so in the third step we now have the green circle the red cross and let's say the abacus now that will become you know the starting point for the fourth iteration fourth iteration it goes back and it's like oh yeah i've used these three items so this is the next item it picks this item and then it stacks them up together so now you can see what's happening at each step of you know the iteration whatever is happening at each step is the result of what we call the scan function in excel so the scan function will give you the result of intermediate steps but if you are not interested in the intermediate steps and you're just interested in what's the final result then that's a reduce function saying what does this whole thing reduce to so it reduces to what to this this is what it reduces to right because you're not interested in any of the steps if you stop at any of those steps you don't have all the items stacked it's only at the last step that you have all the items stacked so the reduce function will give you the final result of the calculation which in this case happens to be what a stack and that's how you get your result that's really what the reduce function is doing the only thing i'll do here is there's a slight modification what's the modification sometimes we start up with like a blank we make the first item you know a blank and there are reasons why we do that the only difference you will see here is that in the final stack there will be a blank and the other items and since you really don't need the blank you know you can just do a drop you know like remove that row and you are left with the same four that you started with right but it's the same you know concept fundamentally so let's go back you know here and then let me uh, kind of start this up. And Oz, when he sees me deleting big formulas like that, he's like, Victor, why would you delete? <laughs> I'm like, well, okay, maybe because I think I can replicate it. Okay, so let's start up. The first thing is to get a list, you know, of the tables that will be included in our stack, which we've already done, you know, here, right? So that's this calculation. We don't need to repeat it. So we can just take this. But let me bring it here. Okay, so that's it. That's what we need. That's uh, the list of tables we are going to be looping from, you know, and we can make this a variable because we may use it a few times. So let me call these tabs. So like tables. OK, so if I say tabs and I return, you know, tabs at the end, it's just going to give me the same list. If I check one more, you can see. All right. So that works. OK, good. So now we don't need to do tabs. Tabs was just for us to see that this is the list of tables. So it's within those tables you know that we are going to do the loop so reduce is going to loop through you know that list of you know tables in tabs okay so let's go oh, sorry i should press alt enter okay so let's go let's do a reduce so now this is what i was talking about the two you know reduce analogies i used some people what they do here is that since they have five items they could pick the first item as the initial value then for the array you know they loop through the remaining four now think about it you know if you have five items you pick the first one your array cannot be the five items again if not when you stack them you have a duplication right the first item will appear twice so what they do is that they take the first item then they drop it from the list of our, the array and then you know they look through the other elements what i do most times is i start up with nothing 
and my array will be a list of everything I need. The only difference is that I may end up with a redundant row. But well, when you see, you know, what you have and where you're going, you know what to do to clean it up. So I'll start up, you know, with nothing right then for my array i'm looping through tabs don't forget what tabs is tabs is a list of tables which is basically this right now you know list of tables that we want to have in our stack okay so now we go into the calculation we go into the lambda bit two variables accumulator and iterator accumulator which is a here you know would always start up with the initial value and then just like you know what i was showing you in the analogy it is always the result of every step so at the end of every step you know a will now store that result and then continue with the next step of the iteration so what it means is that a will start up you know with this initial value why b b always loops through the array so in this case if our array is africa and south america it means b will start up first with africa when it's done with that calculation B would then take on South America and so on. Okay, so good. So now that we have this, what's the calculation we want to do? We know we are doing a V stack. That's what we are doing. You know, we are going to stack, you know, A, which will be our result at the end of every step because you always want to take the result of step two, add it to three, uh, result of step three, add it to four and so on. So we want to take A, which will be our result. And now you are thinking we need to stack it with B. But no, that wouldn't be correct. Why? Because B is what? the table name what you need is not the table name you need what the data in the table right not the table name so what is the data in the table the data in the table is what indirect of what b okay so that's the data in there b is just the table name but the data within it is indirect of b but if you look at the result we have here now what do you notice the first column has the table name which is b and it stacks it with the data from the table so you are not just interested in indirect of b you are interested in both b and indirect of b so to glue them together horizontally i'm going to do an h stack so by saying b what does this mean it means this is the table name and then i want you to stack the table name with the data from the table okay so that's what's happening here table name first column data from the table okay then let's close the brackets and see what this looks like based on what we see we know where to go close the reduce close the let okay good so we have a few things down you can see there's one row that looks like it's not needed here but that's okay i can get rid of that but one other thing you notice is that for the different tables it's only the first row that has the name of the table right you know and the others have na but that's not what you want like if you check this now see what happens you see africa asia south america but you need south america populated across all of this so that's simple to fix it means that within this portion here you know you can put an if na and see if it's an na error right then i want you to put the name of the table in there okay so that way here that is showing na they will return africa all the way here will return asia because you are saying if it's an error na error you know i want you to return you know the name of the table which in this case will be whatever that table name is so let's close that bracket okay and you see that we have that part done and it's really already looking like it the only thing we need to do here is to get rid of you know this first row which i can do with a drop function drop is just like saying it's drop you know kind of delete that so drop and then you're saying you know you're going to drop you know it's going to be how many rows you're dropping one row so that would drop the first row if you use minus one then it's dropping from the bottom so we close the bracket you know and really we kind of have what it is that we need right if you uncheck you know asia you can see it's gone if you uncheck south america it's gone let's see if we add another item to the table entirely that wasn't there like europe now so we do europe and then let's check this and paste here okay let me just take this one down you know and you can see that europe is now added there's only one minor thing you may want to fix that's a case where nothing is checked at all if nothing is checked you see that we will just have a calc error because it doesn't return anything now the calc error is coming of course you know from the filter basically you know when it doesn't see anything then you know it gives this error so what we can do is we can say okay fine we know that this may happen if this whole calculation returns an error we can say just give us blank so i can come over here which is where the calculation starts and say if it's an error you know pretty much is just what i'm saying if it's an error you know just give me nothing so that way it doesn't show us a calc it just shows us nothing you know and then as you check you know as you check you know then that's you know that's that and that's basically how it works so it's beautiful because it's dynamic the user has you know some control whatever they check is what is you know added 
into the table so the building blocks basically are a filter function you know to get the list of tables that you want you know added um, you use indirect to return the data from the tables and then you use a reduce to give you the final result when they are all stacked you know which is really what you want at the end of the day and that's really how it works so if you like this video please hit the like button you can also subscribe to the channel excel moments for now i'm out